All right, so I want to show you a way to kind of spice up your morning work um, using uh, images um, and superimposing them and layering them on, on each other using Google Drawings and a program called Pixlr Editor. The first thing that you're going to notice is that I have a picture here um, that has a solid background. It doesn't have to be blue, but I've chosen blue for this one. You can just take butcher block paper and do that. If you right click, you want to open with Pixlr Editor. That's going to bring us to our editor. Now, what we want to do is eliminate that blue background. You'll notice that this is kind of a low quality image. The resolution is pretty bad. Um, I used an HP Chromebook webcam. Um, and uh, the reason I did this is so that I could show you that you don't have to have the highest quality image to do this. If you have a higher quality image, it'll help, and I'll explain why in a moment. But the first thing that we want to do is unlock this background. So there's a key right here, or a key lock, and you double click it to unlock the layer. And if you click that check mark, it'll show you that checkered background. That means that there's nothing there. Um, so we want that checkered background to show where this blue part is. So how we do that is we can take this marquee tool, and we can just draw in a box here. Um, and then I'll just kind of align it so that it'll get the part that I want. Now you'll notice that there's some blue up at the top, and I'm just going to move my box there and just delete that blue so that it's gone. And what I'm doing here is just doing big sweeping uh, deletes of the blue. So I'm just getting as much blue out as I possibly can. Um, and you can do this for your students um, first quarter. I teach fifth grade, and by second quarter, um, I'm having my students do this because it's kind of a valuable skill, I think, um, if, especially if they want to do anything with graphic design or Photoshop or anything like that. Um, layers are a big element to that. So teaching them how to do it is, is a valuable life skill. Um, and you'll be amazed. They can, they can do this better than I can, usually. By that time, in that time, you know who your students are that can really help other students with computers and things like that. But first quarter, I usually always do it myself. Um, so just taking out big chunks right here of the blue. Um, but the higher resolution images, when you go to your magic wand tool, are going to get or see the lines more defined. In low quality images like this one those lines are kind of pixelated. So if I zoom in here, you can see that that line is not clearly defined. But in a higher quality image, those lines are clear, clearly defined. So when you go to your magic wand tool here, and you click on it, you'll have a clearer picture. So when I delete this part, you can see that there's still some blue in there. And that's why it's nice to have that solid color. You can see that. And if I was doing this for a student, I would make sure to be a lot more careful um, with these edits. But since I'm just kind of showing you guys what to do or how to do this, um, I'll be a little quick with my edits. Um, and what this does is it allows for an image to be behind. And when that image is behind, it will show through. So it's basically chroma keying your static image. OK. So that's good enough for our demo. There will be some blue that shows up, and that's all right. Um, if you click on File, Save, um, it defaults to JPEG. The problem with JPEG is you'll have a white background, and then your background's not going to show through. So you want to make sure that you click this drop down menu and click on PNG transparent full quality. Now you'll see that checkerboard background, which is what we want, because that just means that there's nothing there. And so whatever image is behind it will show through. We're going to type in PNG edit. You can name it whatever you would like. Um, for your students, you know, usually just first name and then um, quarter one or however you want to do that. Um, I saved it to my drive. Um, 
And since we have Chromebooks, that's where I usually save them to. And then I'll just disperse them out in Google Classroom or send it to their drive, share it to them. It just kind of depends on how you want to do that. Um, now I'm going to show you how to add this to a Google Drawing. So um, I'll click on New, and I'll click Google, Google Drawings. For the first one, I always do this part myself. So and I insert an image, um, search the web, and let's say I wanted we were going to do something on the moon. Um, I'll type in moon, and I'll find a moon. Uh, for instance, um, I was doing an article recently on the first Thanksgiving, because we're learning about colonialism, and it was right by Thanksgiving. And so I just had them, uh, I had a picture of the first, or a drawing of the first Thanksgiving, and then I had them insert themselves into that. So I usually start here by giving them the image, and then having them insert an image or insert image from the drive and that is found in my recent ones or they can find it in their drive but when you insert this image you'll see that that background is gone except for that's the little blue that we that we left if you do a better job um, than I did you'll have a, a nicer image so the next part that I do too is I have them insert a shape call out and then we usually do a thought bubble, especially if they're on the moon. Um, and then they can type in text here. They can, you can have them advance to the point where they could do multiple different images and create a comic strip. I've done that. Um, you can have them do um, things where they insert uh, their work. So if they do work on a dry erase board, they could insert a picture of them, of their dry erase board, and then crop it to be um, just their dry erase board. So it looks like they're holding up their dry erase board and showing you their work. Um, you can do all sorts of interesting little things with, within this. Um, and I have found that it is a great way to engage students in the morning work. Um, they really liked it. Um, and I really think it adds something. You can do it for exit tickets. You can do it for morning work. Um, it's just a quick little thing to kind of type in some ideas, and it's more interesting than having them just type a sentence or something like that. So uh, it kind of adds in a new dimension to it. And like I said, if you get them to an advanced level, they can create comic strips where they're you know, doing different images of themselves, and they're creating kind of a story. So uh, it's just been a really interesting thing, and I hope it works out for you. Um, don't forget to follow me on Twitter or subscribe to my channel. Thanks.